Hello YouTubers. Well, I think those uh, air raids that I talked about last time, I think they were repeated for a couple of the following nights, but nothing happened to us. We didn't have any damage or any near misses, thank goodness. Uh, but we sure as hell respected the siren very much uh, thereafter. I think it was a sort of flexing of the muscles of the enemy and a softening up process because as far as I was aware I didn't know of any uh, strategic factories or anything in our area and of course after that everything really had to return to normal um, damaged shops were repaired as best they could and everybody got on with their lives and my life of course was hanging out with my friends and going to school as usual but I'm just going to put up a, a picture of one street because I've just got a little story of something that happened there that um, that also uh, frightened me a bit so uh, I'll be back in a second Well, that was a street that was on my route to school, and uh, as you can see, it um, it had had severe severe damage. So, um, of course, I mean, in the daytime, I mean, you couldn't keep um, diving into shelters and things every time the siren went. Uh, if it did. Uh, and anyway, all the people of, um, you know, the fire service and the police and all of uh, those people, they, they couldn't go diving into shelters. They had to be out in the thick of it uh, doing their job, no matter whether there was a raid on or not. But um, anyway, I was going down this street with my bicycle, obviously not riding it, because uh, you can see from the picture that wouldn't have been possible, but carrying my bicycle... Um, I don't know whether the siren had gone or not, but I remember one of the firemen shouting, Take cover! And I didn't know why, but then um, an, an enemy plane swooped down um, and followed the line of the street. And of course I rushed into a doorway and I didn't know what was going to happen. I thought he was going to machine gun us or drop a bomb or something, but... Um, I know that isn't a terribly exciting story because he just disappeared into uh, into the distance, but I think you can imagine that um, uh, that wasn't uh, that wasn't too pleasant. Um, the aeroplane was a Junkers, and uh, if you don't know what one of those is, uh, I'll uh, I'll pop you up a picture. So, life did go on as normal or normal for those times of course and I could tell you lots of stories about things we did as children during during that time of finding crashed aeroplanes and bits of aeroplanes and shrapnel and stuff like that but I want to move on really to the following year because in the following year we were attacked um, and bombed um, much more and by that time um, because we were using the shelter a lot more uh, my dad had put uh, bunks in there so that instead of uh, having to get out of warm beds and into the bunker we in fact uh, uh, very often slept down there and of course during this next air raid um, we'd been sleeping there for some time so I want to I want to tell you really as I've been looking back I realize that something that happened now was well a process of growing up but still being at the age of 15 uh, maybe growing up a little earlier than possibly people do today um, 
I don't quite know why, but it would appear that um, my parents were very worried about me. We'd been sleeping in the shelter for some time, and they obviously thought that I was getting too tired to cope, I suppose. And so they decided that they would um, send me away to uh, an aunt who lived uh, well, the same place that, in fact, we were at when war was declared all those years before, and send me away uh, to rest uh, and recuperate, uh, I suppose. Anyway, my dad took me to the railway station and um, bought my ticket and put me onto a train to this place and I think it's probably the first time in my life that uh, I can remember I, I was emotionally moved I suppose um, and felt like crying I can't remember ever crying before I suppose I must have done as a little child all children do if they fall over and hurt themselves and what have you but um, I had no reason to cry before and um, I didn't actually this time but it was a very moving experience my dad put me in the car carriage he gave me the ticket and then he gave me a ten shilling note with instructions that uh, I wasn't to spend it all but um, when I needed to come home that would buy the ticket and also a telegram could be sent if there were any problems and then he did something that he had never done before he, he, hug he hugged me and uh, I could feel the pocket watch that he had hanging round a chain from his waistcoat and the smell of the the smell of the meat and the tobacco that had got impregnated into his jacket was um, well just um, just something I remember very clearly and he he left and as he walked back through the station as far as I thought the station was completely empty now I don't think it could have been really but there used to be pigeons that would uh, nest in the um, rafters of the um, entrance to the railway station of course they would come down to the ground and feed off scraps that uh, uh, any of the um, passengers um, would have put on the ground and as he walked back through these pigeons they flew up and the noise of their wings was very much like um, machine guns and it was a very poignant moment and as I not looking back at it just now because I have looked back at it before I realized that uh, that was the first time in my life that I felt that um, I was on my own one didn't know whether you were ever going to see your father again what was going to happen to you and uh, although I was 15 years old um, I felt very uh, not afraid but uh, very lonely when I arrived at my aunt's house of course there was no means that they could be um, any means of communication nobody had telephones and uh, so I arrived on her doorstep and of course she was uh, extremely amazed she thought the whole family may have been killed and I was the survivor and and there was something terrible had happened and uh, when I explained that dad has just asked if you will put me up for a little while because he seems to think that um, I'm just very very tired and he wants me to be at a place of safety and uh, of course she did she took me in fed me put me to bed and I slept for a long time and um, well that really was the um, the incident uh, the incident was over but I it was a very poignant part of my life I think 
and so I will end it there with my usual goodbye but I'll put some music on for you you seem to like the one I put on before the recording by Alan Lomax so I'll give you another clip of that and if I'm brave enough I'll pop you up some pictures of me as a 15 year old and you can see what a right little poser I was um, so until next time goodbye